let's start by talking about the biggest design choice for the light suit. The light suit uses USB sockets to connect the pieces of the suit to the microcontroller. You may ask, why do you use USB and not solder the wires directly to the board? That comes down to three reasons. The first, it makes it easy to go to the bathroom. Given the pieces of your suit, your pants, your coat, and other pieces, the ability to disconnect from your board is a big deal. If you decide to solder the lights directly to the controller, you will have a tough time trying to put the pieces on and taking them back off. If you have to go to the bathroom, it's an easy thing to disconnect and reconnect. The second reason is wear and tear. Soldering the connections onto the lights that are sewn or connected to your clothing will be subject to a lot of pulling. After this happens a few times, the solder joints will come apart. USB is a friction fit. By soldering the USB sockets to the points of the pull will result in only the USB connection pulling free and not a permanent solder point tearing. Lastly, there are three connections to your pixel lights, your power or line, your neutral or ground, and your data signal. USB-A carries four connections, power or line, your neutral or ground, a data signal in, and an extra data signal out. USB socket connections make it easy to share your power and neutral connections, and then send a different data signal to each output. USB is also very common, so finding wires will be easy. If you find yourself without a 3D printer, you can easily purchase a small plastic box from a dollar store or retail store like the one shown here. It will fit a small breadboard nicely. Before you can permanently stick the breadboard into a box, we'll take measurements for where we want to fasten the USB female connectors, as well as additional ports. I'll provide a link for the USB connectors below. In this build, we'll have three output ports altogether, one for each leg and one for the hoodie. We'll have a fourth USB port to handle the power input. Finally, as a backup, we have a hole that will allow a mini USB cord to power the board and the lights as a backup. Once you've lined up where you want your USB connector jack sockets, use a rotary cutting tool or a drill to cut the holes in your box. Make sure to cut them just big enough to slide them in. Most of the female socket connectors have a lip or edge. Try not to cut the hole larger than the lip so you can fit the socket into the box and have the edge keep it from pushing in too far. Once you've made the rough cut, if you have a rotary tool, you can smooth and square out the edges with a detail tool. Now that you have the holes cut, you can attach the socket connector. Using a hot glue gun, you can prep the bottom of the hole before you insert the socket. In this video, I cut the holes a little too big and I inserted the socket from the inside. If you cut the holes small enough for the lip, as I mentioned earlier, you can insert the socket from the outside and fit it into the lip. Once you have the socket inserted, place a generous amount of hot glue around the socket so it won't move. The battery power first came in through the USB connector at the top left. In a pinch, the power for the board and the lights could also come from the mini USB jack already built into the board. A hole in the box allowed the cord to be passed through. From there, the VIN and ground to the board was connected to the power rail on the breadboard. The power passed through the capacitor and out to the wires soldered onto the first USB connector. The power wires then chained to each connector in turn until all three outputs are powered. The three data ports on the board are then connected over the 330 ohm resistor bridge. From there, each data port was soldered onto the data plus pin on the connector. Data only flows out from the board to the light strips, so there was no need to wire in the data minus pin on the USB connector. Now that the box is finished, we're ready to give it a test run. You'll notice here that the phone charger is connected with a USB-A to USB-A connector, which is not easy to find as a USB-A to USB micro or USB-C cable is. It's amazing to think that the board and the lights are all powered off of a single phone battery charger. This particular test run footage was created before WLED software was popular, so I wrote my own code using the Fast LED library. I can also change the pattern using the keypad and an Android app I wrote using Bluetooth Low Energy. You can find links to that particular source code in GitHub below. There are pros and cons to using WLED versus writing your own code. If you're not a strong coder, this has lots of features out of the box without having to write a single line of code. The wireless access point of WLED allows you to control your lights from your phone without having to write a mobile application. However, you can't use the keypad to control your patterns if you use WLED. You may be able to configure it to change the patterns based on a button trigger, but I've not done that yet. Also, custom patterns are really difficult with WLED. You're pretty much limited to line patterns. With a custom code, you can create custom patterns and behaviors tailored to your suit. The matrix and cape I use in the later versions of the suit has patterns that can't be replicated on WLED. We'll start off with the basis of the suit, and that's the shirt and pants. The shirt and pants all come from a single Alitov addressable LED strip that's waterproof, that has 300 pixels for 15.x meters, I don't remember how, 15.5 meters or something like that, 
which gives you a strip of 300 lights, which breaks down easily to 150 on the suit, on the actual hoodie, and 75 pixels per leg. Now you can see here, what we have uh, is the strip, and we don't actually stick it to it, but we have different clips that are sewn on that are attached to the light strip at certain key places. And at the end of the light suit, we actually have, we're actually connecting a USB cord, a USB cable. All we do is we trim, trim off the end, we solder it to the end, and it follows itself back all the way to the center. And here we'll put, plug this into the backpack for the data and power. You can see that it spirals twice on the, each arm. Now we'll go to the pants. We do the pants in a similar manner. At the top, we have a, a USB-A female jack where we'll plug in so you can easily attach and detach. And it's a friction fit so that whenever you have to go to the bathroom, you don't have to fumble around with cords and be attached. And it spirals, it allows you to sit. So the, the bottom is blank so you don't sit on lights, but it spirals around the leg. And each side has the female port and it's 75 pixels down each leg. The cape and matrix is the latest version of the suit and I'll briefly cover it here. However, I'll cover the cape and matrix in more detail in a later video. The next part is the cape and backpack. So the backpack houses the brains and all you see all the USB cables coming out of there. It hooks to the cape. The cape has front and back lights. So on either side, it's chained and it kind of zigzag across all the way down to the bottom. It's a see-through material mesh and it's sewn in at different places. So the front and back are sewn in at the same place so they kind of mirror each other. And in the back, it's also a, a, a thicker cloth with a sewn in see-through plastic with a 16 by 16 matrix. You now have the tool to create a DIY mobile light suit for your cosplayer Halloween needs. If you get your own project off the ground, come back and leave a comment in the video. Thanks for visiting us here at Bites of Pie.